Good afternoon and welcome to the History Tidbit number three from the Haynes Sheldon Museum from home. My name is Reggie and I'm the Community Coordinator at the Haynes Sheldon Museum. Now we understand that it is April Fool's Day, a day where you can't take everything at face value, even history. Uh, in light of this, today's History Tidbit theme is April Fools and the importance of checking your sources. So April Fools or All Fools Day is a popular folk holiday that has been celebrated for centuries. Um, in spite of this, the true origins remain a mystery. Some theories and historical possibilities include renewal festivals, so these are historically seen in several cultures worldwide. They celebrate the end of winter and the return of spring, and often involve ritualized forms of mayhem and good-spirited pranks. So April Fools follows characteristics of renewal festivals. Uh, pranks and disruptions to social order are allowed. For example, you have kids that are pranking their parents, um, but this is only within a strict time frame, typically of one day. Traditionally, no pranks are supposed to be played after 12 o'clock noon, uh, though this is not strictly followed in the U.S. Because of these similarities, historians have theorized that April Fool's Day evolved out of ancient renewal festivals, although they don't agree which one. Uh, so in the first picture on the left is a French painting of the Robin Saturnalia, which is a winter festival celebrated at the end of December. Uh, this involved drink, merriment, and mockery. Uh, slaves were allowed to pretend that they ruled their masters on this day, and there was even a mock king, uh, the Lord of Misrule, who ruled for the day. And so this is an example of a renewal festival from ancient times um, that many people believe that April Fools evolved out of an ancient renewal festival. So in addition to this, um, one of the most common theories is the transition to the Gregorian calendar in the 16th century. So in Europe, the pre-Gregorian calendar ended the year near the end of March, coinciding with the beginning of spring. Uh, under the new Gregorian calendar, the beginning of the year was moved to January. In the story of April Fools, under this theory, um, the story is that the word of the calendar switch traveled slowly to rural areas, so country dwellers continued to celebrate the new year in spring, earning them the name April Fools. Um, and this is also talking about the transition in France to the Gregorian calendar. And with this, um, in France, pranksters on this day would secretly stick paper fish to people's backs. Um, and the victims of this prank were called uh, April Fish, which I can't pronounce the French term, but Poison de Avril. I'll put the spelling uh, in a link below. Um, and April Fish, which is to this day the French term for April Fool's Day. So you can read more on the origin theories of April Fools in articles that will be posted to our page after this video. And whatever the true origin of April Fools, the tradition remains popular to this day, um, both in individual pranks and also more commonly in mass media. So it's important to know that you can never fully trust the source on April Fools Day. Um, so with this in mind, we're going to jump back to an article from the Pioneer Press in 1912. So the Haynes Pioneer Press, which is our original newspaper for the Chilkat Valley, um, we have articles that have been digitized from this news source uh, in the museum collection. And so this article was actually not an April Fool's Day joke, but it follows along the theme. Um, and it is from February 3rd, 1912, volume 6, number 11 of the Haynes Pioneer Press. And the article is about Dame Rumor Spreads a False Alarm. So I will read you the article. Now, Sergeant Paul Kegel of the Battalion Band and Mrs. Harry Nelson have been the recipients this week of the congratulations of their many friends over the announcement of their marriage, which was said to have taken place last Sunday evening at the home of Mrs. J.B. Peterson, sister of Mrs. Nelson. 
the announcement of the marriage was a great surprise to both mrs nelson and sergeant keagle both of whom were not aware that such a ceremony had taken place until informed so by dame rumour who spread the news to the four winds that blow the source of the rumour has not been located but suffice it to say that the news was spread throughout the city on tuesday to the effect that the couple had been married it was taken up and was cabled to skagway where the daily alaskan of that city eagerly selecting it as a choice bit of romance from their neighboring city gave the item due publicity both mrs nelson and the sergeant deny the rumor and state emphatically that the ceremony did not take place rev mclean also states that he did not perform the ceremony that he was given the credit for doing and the saddest part of all is that the many congratulations which have been offered to the young couple with the view of showing the good will of their many friends have not brought joy to their hearts that the donors had hoped to convey, but have been very embarrassing to the recipients. So again, this was not a April Fool's Day prank, but as an example of probably a historical prank on someone's part that led to uh, embarrassment on the half of the receivers. Um, so we have digitized articles from the Pioneer Press from the years 1912 to about 1914 in our collection. Uh, so let us know in the comments below if you would like more excerpts from this in future history tidbits or content on our social media. So finally, you can't talk about April Fool's Day in, Ala in Southeast Alaska without mentioning the infamous 1974 false eruption of Mount Edgecombe in Sitka. So on this morning, residents of Sitka, Alaska, woke to see black smoke pluming from Mount Edgecombe, a volcano that was, has been dormant for over 400 years. This turned out to be the work of local prankster Oliver Porky Bikar. With assistance from a pilot friend, he had dumped old rubber tires into the cone of the volcano and set them on fire. This plan was four years in the making. Uh, he had to wait for the bright weather conditions. And after everyone realized that the volcano wasn't actually erupting, the prank was met with positive reactions and is one of the most popular Southeast Alaska pranks to this day. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, check our page later today for some links to historical pranks around the world. And we want to hear from you. So let us know what is your favorite prank, either from history or that has been played on you or your friend. Uh, and today, stay safe, stay home, stay healthy, and stay just a little bit mischievous. Thank you.